Good evening and welcome to the Durham District School Board meeting of Monday, April 15th, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order and begin with the land acknowledgement. <clears throat> the Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. I'd like to call on Trustee Oldfield to introduce our guest this evening, and then Trustee uh, Pinillo at the end of the performance. Trustee Oldfield. Thank you. This evening, we're excited to welcome the RS McLaughlin CVI Jazz Ensemble, who will play O Canada, followed by The Preacher by Horace Silver, and Burke's Works by John Burke's Dizzy Gillespie, McLaughlin's Jazz Ensemble members are in grades 9 and 10, and they are directed by music teacher Curtis Hunter. Principal Jacqueline Crosby is also in attendance this evening, and we extend a warm welcome to you all. Please rise if you can for O Canada. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chair, through you. On behalf of the entire Board of Trustees, thank you so much to the students and staff of RS McLaughlin CVI, who are no longer in the room with us, for their work in preparing for the performance tonight. And I hope trustees know how much time and effort goes into a perfect performance. So hopefully they watch this back and know that we are so appreciative that they came to share their talents with us. And we hope they'll return in the future for another performance. On your agenda, we have no declarations of interest this evening. Are, are there any declarations of conflict of interest? <laughs> are we on recess? Okay, so they're back. Let's, let's get them. Oh. Do it again. <clears throat> can, you, can you turn your mic on? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, really quickly before you all run out of the room again, R.S. McLaughlin, your fabulous jazz ensemble, uh, while you were outside, we were giving you our gratitude. And so we just wanted to, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for the time and effort that went into your wonderful performance and for sharing your talents with us. And we hope you will come back for us again one night soon. Okay, thank you. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest at this time? I'm seeing none. There are no declarations of interest at this time. Uh, may I have a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda as distributed? Uh, Trustee Edwards, Trustee Brown, all in favor? Motion carries. Item six on your agenda. Is there any objection to the matters listed in section six of the agenda being approved or adopted as noted on the agenda? Seeing none, those items are approved and adopted as noted on the agenda. I would like to turn the meeting over now to Director Camille Williams-Taylor to present ministry memorandum. Thank you and through you, Chair. Uh, we have uh, our update, Director's update this evening, uh, April 15th. Uh, good evening and welcome everyone. On April the 4th, the province announced a $1.3 billion investment to support construction and expansion of 60 schools province-wide. The DDSB hopes to benefit from this historic investment in the coming years to ensure that we continue to meet the needs of the growing communities across Durham Region. The French as a Second Language Department is hosting a virtual information session for families on April 24th at 6 p.m. Families interested in French immersion are encouraged to drop in. You can visit the Durham District School website, uh, School Board website for more information. DDSB offers French immersion at 18 DDSB elementary and seven secondary schools. The DDSB has established an anti-black racism advisory committee and a human rights advisory committee. These two advisory committees will act in a strategic advisory role to the Board of Trustees, and we're seeking community members to join each of the committees. For more information about how to express interest in joining, please visit our website or social media sites. This week is National Volunteer Week. I would like to express our appreciation for the volunteers in our schools and community who help to support our students and families. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you, Chair, and that concludes my updates for this evening. Thank you. We're now on item eight, public question period. Each question being asked this evening, actually there's just one, will be displayed on screen along with its response from staff. Questioners are reminded to ask only their approved question. 
We have allocated up to 30 minutes for public question period and the timer will be visible for all participants. All approved questions along with their corresponding answers from staff will be posted on the DDSB website following this meeting. All questions submitted for public question period will be shared with trustees following the meeting. I would like to invite Dylan Reynolds to ask a question virtually, which will then be responded to by Associate Director David Wright. Dylan, are you there? Good evening and good evening, we make one. Hello, Dylan. Right. Whenever you're ready, go ahead with your question. I'm ready. All right, my question tonight is about the password preset. Both in March of 2023 and September of 2023, and in March of 2024, our passwords had to be reset, which caused a lot of students to be locked out of their Chromebooks. I'm just wondering, should our password be reset for students once a year instead of twice a year? Hi, Dylan. Thanks for the question. Passwords and password management are important components of our overall information technology security strategy. And from that perspective, regular password resets will continue to be required. That being said, the information technology department does extend its apologies for any disruptions encountered by students during this most recent password reset. We encountered an issue with the Microsoft service used in our password reset process that resulted in delays and some malfunctioning. Should you have any ongoing concerns or wish to discuss issues you encountered while resetting your password, please communicate that with your teacher who will contact the IT department. Thanks. All right, so thank you guys and get ready for the Stanley Cup playoff on Saturday. <laughs> thank you, Dylan. That concludes the public question period and we'll now move on to item nine on the agenda and back to Director Camille Williams-Taylor for good news from the system. Thank you, Chair, uh, and I will turn it over to our media team who will uh, get our video rolling uh, with good news from the system. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of DDSB students and staff, we are happy to bring you good news from across the system. Congratulations to Ella robinson Bruno a J. Clark Richardson student who competed in the Special Olympics Canada Winter Games in Calgary, Alberta. Ella proudly represented Team Ontario in speed skating and came home with two golds, a silver and a bronze medal. Well done. On March 23rd, the Education Centre was opened to Durham Police members to host the Youth in Policing Conference. More than 40 organizations from Durham Region offered information on volunteer and summer employment opportunities. Over 200 youth had the opportunity to talk with police, border security officers, the fire department, public libraries, and many more. The event was a success and we are proud to open the space to community partners. Liam Kennedy, a grade 11 student at Uxbridge Secondary School, composed a remarkable piece titled Underworld Fantasia for the senior concert band over the summer. The band will perform it in concerts and festivals and the University of Toronto Wind Ensemble, where Liam was invited to have his composition performed. The band is excited to perform during their music trip to Montreal. Well done, Liam. Yuvin Marasini, a student at Terry Fox Public School, made history as the youngest contestant on Canada's Got Talent at just four years old. Now at the age of five, he is participating in the show's third season, which premiered in March. Yuvin gained attention after a video of him covering Vacation by Dirty Heads went viral on TikTok, amassing 15 million views overnight. Good luck, Yuvin. This past March saw championship finals of many high school sports and the beginning of many elementary activities. Congratulations to our sports teams for participating in a variety of activities across the district and doing their best to be champions. TV Ontario visited GL Roberts CVI students, bringing with them TVO Mathify to assist students and connect them to online tutors for free math tutoring. Staff from TVO Mathify not only spoke with students, but made themselves available by joining teachers in the evening for parent-teacher conferences to help support families and answer questions. Blair Ridge Public School created a friendship club in which students come together weekly to form meaningful connections and engage in various activities. 
It creates a warm and vibrant atmosphere within the school, fostering friendships and celebrating diversity. The club is characterized by its spirit of camaraderie and shared exploration, where students participate in self-directed activities, sparking joy and laughter as they celebrate each other's uniqueness. O'Neill CVI's Performing Arts Department hosted four days of regional festivals that qualify groups for nationals, the Motor City Jazz Music Festival and the Ontario Vocal Festival Concert Slash Chamber. Over 40 ensembles equating to hundreds of students from the Durham region and the GTA shared their hard work and love of music, then attended workshops with professional musicians to further their learning and growth. Thank you to the Ajax Fire Department for visiting Lord Elgin Public Schools primary students on March 21st, where they presented their Learn Not to Burn program. Firefighters from Ajax Fire presented safety measures to the students and ways to prevent fires in their home. We are appreciative to our community partners for visiting and teaching our students. As you can see, the dates of significance take us to the next board meeting. Thank you to Ryan and Jessica from Port Perry High School for reading this month's good news. Moving to recommended actions, item 10A on your agenda, uh, the election of a special education advisory committee trustee. There are three trustees who sit on SEAC. There is one position available that um, we will uh, hopefully fill this evening. I will now open nominations. Trustee Oldfield. I'd like to nominate Trustee Arsenault. Trustee Arsenault, will, will you accept the nomination? Yes, I will accept. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? I'll ask the last for the last time. Are there any further nominations? The nominations are now closed. Congratulations, Trustee Arsenal. I'd like to ask Associate Director David Wright to speak to the request for easement at, at 400 Taunton Road East. Trustee Wright, uh, or Associate Director Wright. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, uh, I'd like to welcome and introduce Lisa Bianca, Head of Facility Services, who will address the report this evening. Okay. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of this report is to recommend that the Board of Trustees adopt a resolution to grant an easement along the Taunton Road frontage of the Education Centre to facilitate the Region of Durham's Road Improvement Works project. Uh, the Region of Durham is undertaking road widening works along Taunton Road and is seeking a permanent easement for a small portion along the frontage of 400 Taunton Road East on DDSB-owned lands for its traffic signals and sidewalk. Most of the new infrastructure will be on the region's existing right-of-way. However, the signal cable and a portion of the sidewalk will be on the edge of the DDSB property. Easements are a form of partial interest in a property. They entitle a party to use the land but not have ownership of it. This easement is valued at 50% of the fair market value of the land for this type of easement and the fact that the region would not be taking fee simple ownership. Uh, Ontario Regulation 374-223, which is the acquisition and disposition of real property made under the Education Act, allows a resolution to grant an easement if four conditions are met, as outlined on page 15 of your report. The affected property, as identified in Appendix A on page 17, a 5 meter by 30 meter uh, parcel located at the Taunton Road entrance to the Education Centre has been evaluated and meets the above noted criteria for the granting of an easement. 
Um, please see page 16 for the recommendation for trustee consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, ask for a mover and a seconder to put forward the motion for the recommendation found on page 16 that the Board of Trustees approve the granting of an easement in favour of the Region of Durham for an area of 0 0.126 along Taunton Road East for a sum of $173,250 to facilitate road widening activities. Looking for a seconder. Trustee Brown, will you second that? Yes. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Sure. Trustee Pinello. Thank you, Chair. Through you, I did just have one quick question. I wondered if there was a timeline attached to this, uh, an expectation for when they think they would begin and, and finish the, the widening. Thank you, Trustee Pinillo, and through you, Chair. Uh, yes, we've been working closely with the region team. Um, we certainly want this work to take place when the education is least occupied, so the target is for the work to take place this summer. Um, if, there, if we were to see delays, as sometimes happens with construction, um, we would certainly work with the region to make sure that access to and from the site is not impacted. It's a very busy entrance, and uh, they're aware of that as well as us, so thank you. Thank you, and through you, Chair. In general, I think this sounds like a great idea. I just wanted to ask um, what the impact will be on the students of St. Clair. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, we expect the impact to be minimal. Um, with it being taking place over the summer. Uh, however, we are having, uh, I believe we're having summer school at Sinclair this summer, so there will be a little bit of traffic in. We will certainly action the uh, Anderson Street uh, entrance uh, to and from, which actually uh, facilitates access to the school better than the Taunton Road uh, entrance anyway. So we will uh, be sure to share that with the uh, summer school operators. Trustee Linton. I thank you and for you, Chair. Um, so, not to get into the weeds, but if you can just explain the $173,250, like what is done with that and Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, the, the income would be considered proceeds of disposition, um, and it would go into our uh, administrative account for proceeds of disposition to be used for future, um, future improvements to uh, board properties. Seeing no further questions, so, the motion is that the Board of Trustees approve the granting of an easement in favor of the Region of Durham for an area of 0.126 acres along Taunton Road East for a sum of $173,250 to facilitate road widening activities. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair, if I might, um make a recommendation to the board to adopt an additional resolution um, consistent with the wording of the regulation on page 15. Um, recommend that the board adopt a resolution that it does not require for its purpose the interest that the easement would create. What is the motion? Well, I'm, I'm recommending that the, the board adopt a motion that it does not require for its purposes the interest that the easement would create, just to mimic the language in the regulation on, from page 15. Can I have a mover for that motion? Trustee Pinillo and seconder, Trustee Morton. Is there any discussion or questions around that? I'm seeing none. All in favor of the additional motion? Any opposed? Motion carries.
Moving on to item 10C, and I'll call again on Associate Director David Wright for the 2024 EDC Charges Bylaw, Educational Development Charges Bylaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, through you this evening, uh, there are a number of individuals who are here to support the report. Lisa Bianca, Head of Facilities, uh, will be leading the report. Lydia Dallet, Manager of Property and Planning. Uh, and online, we have Cynthia Clark and Brad Teichman. Thanks. Lisa. Thank you, and through you, Chair. We're here this evening to seek trustees' approval to enact the Education Development Charges Bylaw applicable to all municipalities within the Durham District School Board's jurisdiction. The current five-year Education Development Charges Bylaw expires April 30th, 2024. To continue to collect EDCs, a successor bylaw must be adopted by the Board of Trustees no later than April 26th, 2024, to avoid any interruption in the collection of EDCs. EDCs are the only revenue source that the DDSB can use to acquire and develop new school sites, leading to new school construction. Together with the Durham Catholic District School Board, the DDSB retained the services of Brad Teichman of Overland LLP Legal Counsel to prepare the new EDC bylaw document and Quadrant Advisory Group Limited to complete the required Educational Development Charges Background Study dated February 13, 2024. Based on Quadrant Advisory Group Limited's extensive study of both residential and non-residential development projected over the next 15 years, anticipated enrollment growth and the number of new sites that will require funding for purchase was determined. In accordance with the Education Act, this EDC background study was submitted to the Ministry of Education for approval, and the Minister's written approval to adopt an EDC bylaw was received by the DDSB on April 11th, 2024. In March 2019, the Ministry imposed a legislative rate limit on the amount a district's EDC could increase annually, despite the actual revenue needed to address real site acquisition and site preparation costs. The consultant determined that DDSB can maximize revenue collection in a capped environment by collecting 94% of the required revenue from residential development and 6% from non-residential development. The DDSB's existing EDC bylaw enables the DDSB to only collect residential EDCs. The Education Act requires a series of public meetings to receive community feedback, and on February 28, 2024, public meetings were held jointly in two parts with the D Durham Catholic District School Board. These public meetings provided an opportunity for trustees, developers, and members of the public to receive information, provide feedback, and question the policy and background information presented regarding the Educational Development Charges Review being undertaken by both DDSB and DCDSB. At the February 28, 2024 public meetings, no members of the public or the development community provided presentations or input. Should the bylaw be adopted this evening, the in-force date will be May 1st, 2024, to ensure that there is no gap in EDC collections between the existing bylaw and the proposed new bylaw. If adopted, the new residential EDC on May 1st, 2024 would be $3,749 per unit, and the new non-residential EDC would be 10 cents per square foot of non-residential gross floor area. These amounts would increase every May 1st by $300 for the residential portion and $0.10 cents for the non-residential EDC until the expiration of the five-year bylaw. As set out in page 24 of your report, there are two recommendations for your approval this evening. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. So I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. Uh, one motion for the two recommendations. Uh, Trustee Cunningham, seconder. Uh, Trustee um, Pan Panillo. Um, is there any discussion around around this motion? Trustee Morton. Thank you, and through you, Chair. 
I hope that the province is looking at this and considering it. I would much rather have the $12,540 as opposed to the $3,700, but I will be supporting this motion. Thank you, Trustee Morton. Trustee Oldfield. Thank you, and through you, Chair. I, I have a question. Um, even with this increase, um, it would seem that we are still uh, going to be short a considerable amount of money. And my question would be, where, how much are we, would we still remain short? And where might we get that money? What's the process for trying to come up with the money that we need? Thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, throughout the uh, entire 15-year period, it's anticipated that there will be a shortfall of about $638.7 million over that period. Um, with that, um, obviously, discussions uh, with the ministry have to take place. Um, we are uh, sort of not the only, only board sort of facing this, so certainly uh, the conversation has begun with the ministry. They are aware and it has to, uh, would have to continue with them until such time as a cap is lifted and then we could resume full collection. Supplemental? Uh, no, not really, <laughs> but I do, I do support the motion then in that case because $638 million is a lot of money, uh, and I think that we need to be doing everything that we can in order to uh, increase or to reduce that gap, uh, so I do stand in favor of that motion. Trustee Edwards. Uh, thank you, and um, I do support the motion. Um, I'm dismayed about the government still not uh, changing, looking at BDC uh, uh, regulation. Um, I know OSPA has, has written many letters about it, and it is talked about. Um, along the lines, the same lines is that, um, where does this deficit on EDCs, who actually has the ownership of it? Is that a deficit as far as what the board is concerned or where does it actually reside? Through you, Madam Chair, uh, DDSB does hold the debt instrument and so it is, uh, it is ours. Supplemental? Um, and as, as supplemental as far as that's concerned and when it comes to uh, boring because we have, uh, I mean, uh, we, we do boring in order to uh, cover uh, when it comes to uh, land purchase and so forth. Um, where again, could you sort of explain as far as the boring uh, process and, and our, our limits? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. So trustees do approve a short-term borrowing resolution on an annual basis. Currently, the resolution allows DDSB to borrow up to $175 million. As you can see by the numbers included in this report, uh, in a very short time period, the, uh, that amount will be greatly exceeded. And so we will need to engage in conversation with the Ministry of Education to uh, determine on an ongoing basis how this um, uh, deficit will be supported. So uh, historically, DDSB has borrowed from a, a, a chartered bank to cover uh, the um, interim nature of the uh, deficit. And so conceptually, uh, we purchase land for a significant sum of money as residential construction uh, is developed. The education development charges come into our bank account to offset the, the purchase of that land. The discrepancy between the EDC calculated amount and the EDC uh, max legislated amount is such now that we will likely never catch up regardless of the amount of development that takes place in Durham region. So we will need a, a different approach at some point to uh, manage our 
our uh, land uh, purchased related deficit. Thank you. Trustee Pinello. Thank you, Chair, through you. Um, I will vote in favor of this motion. However, I did want to flag that I think it may be beneficial that while staff are having these conversations with the ministry, as we've heard that trustees perhaps um, also draft a letter of support outlining how unsustainable this is um, and that we see the impact and would advocate for a much better system for EDCs and funding um, models generally. So I'm happy to move that motion if I could. So I know we did, but. Trustee Pinello, we, we did send a letter. Was there some additional information you wanted to add? Um, I just think that we should continue to correspond on this. I just don't think it's being taken very seriously. Would you seriously. be agreeable to us uh, speaking with Associate Director Wright and then getting his recommendation on that? That would be fine. I know we did send one previously on the cap, and so we could. I just think that it would be beneficial for us to keep this sort of top of mind for ourselves so that it's something we're corresponding regularly on as opposed to just once in a while when we have to approve motions. Yes. Thank you. I see no further discussion. So I'm going to ask then now, I'll, I'll call the question, all in favor of the motion? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, item carries, motion carries. I don't, I'm just um, checking my notes. I, I'm not sure that the motion itself was actually put, um, was, put was actually put on the floor. Um, so I think if we could, um, page 20, it? page 24 of the, did somebody move it? We okay. had a mover and a seconder for the motion. Okay. We did. Yes. Okay. My mistake, I apologize. No, thank you. We wanted to be sure that we got that motion on the floor. So item uh, 10D. Uh, there are no items that were removed from the list of consent items this evening. So I'll move on to um, item 11, information item, and initially go to Council Patrick Cotter for the Integrity Commissioner Annual Report. Thank you, and through you, Madam Chair, the report can be found on um, page 39 of the agenda package. Um, under, our, under the Board's Code of Conduct, the Board has an Integrity Commissioner appointed to um, investigate and report to the Board of Trustees on uh, Code of Conduct complaints. So the, um, and the, board, the Code of Conduct requires an annual report to be submitted by the Integrity Commissioner. Um, so that report is, uh, actually starts on page 40 uh, of the package and it contains the summary of the information of the reports that were submitted, investigated and concluded during the, uh, the operating period which is from January 2023 to January 2024. Um, and <clears throat> the, the report also notes that there are a number of complaints that were made in the prior operating period, but concluded during this operating period. So both of those numbers are included in the report. The report also confirms that um, training was provided to trustees and concludes the annual billing for the integrity commissioner at approximately $76,000. So subject to any report, uh, questions you may have, um, that is the report from the Integrity Commissioner. Are there any questions? Trustee Edwards. Not a question, Madam Chair, but I'm just, um, uh, what bothers me about this is that the new regulation that still hasn't come out is a, uh, basically man mandating Integrity Commissioner's uh, two boards. Um, and, um, but there's no funding and it has been stated that there'll be no funding following. And we look at this bill to date as far as is $76,000 plus dollars. It is an extremely exp uh, expensive endeavor that is now mandated, will be mandated very shortly by the Ministry of Education. I think it's it's prudent that maybe uh, we write a letter again when it comes we're talking about budget as a board to ensure that the coverage of 
mandated I IC uh, boards having to implement uh, an, a mandated IC position uh, or contract or whatever that it be covered under the GSNs. So um, I just really consider that as a, as an option for the board, and I will make a motion if, if if I see some a little bit of support to write a letter. Are you suggesting, uh, Trustee Edwards, that when we uh, d uh, go have finance committee meetings and discuss budget, that you'll bring forward this motion to write a letter at that time? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't think I don't think it really matters because we know it's not covered. It's not going to be planned to be covered, and so um, I think that we can be proactive and actually write a letter and, and, and say to the ministry, "This is what our cost has been," um, and that um, having um, basically having no coverage in the GSNs uh, will uh, basically impact the uh, basically board and governance lines across the uh, pro across the province. So you're putting forward a motion? Yes, I, I, I will. I'm just saying that the, the Board of Trustees, sorry, I did not, I just thought of this, sorry, <laughs> uh, but the Board of Trustees write a letter to the Ministry of Education um, to, um, to ensure the GSNs cover the implementation of a mandated integrity commissioner. Looking for a, sec Looking for a seconder for the motion? Trustee Cunningham, will you second that? Yes, absolutely. I think that is a wonderful idea. Thank you. Is there any discussion around that? Trustee Cameron? Thank you, Chair. I'm wondering where our IC is covered right now under our budget currently. Um, through you, Madam Chair, I might, uh, David Wright might be better equipped to answer that than me. Um, Associate Director Wright, if you could jump in. Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, the big envelope would be under our admin and governance envelope, but I believe that the uh, IC costs are held uh, in the legal services department. Thank you. Are there, is there any additional discussion? So the motion is, I'm um, not sure if we've got it to go up on the screen, but writing a letter to the Ministry of Education. Um, did you, wondering if we have a motion that we can put up on the screen shortly? Yes. Thank you, Julian. So we have a motion that's moved and seconded. The Board of Trustees write a letter to the Ministry of Education to ensure the uh, GSN covers the funding of the mandated integrity commissioner position. All in favor? No, we've had good. Trustee Oldfield, you have yeah, a question? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask if position is the right uh, wording. Uh, we're asking for funding of the mandated integrity commissioner costs. And I, it's not a position that we're, we have, it's a cost we're incurring. Any objection to that small change? None at all. Okay. Trustee Brown? Thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, I would also suggest no abbreviations. So GSN actually write what it is as we're going to be passing a motion. Thank you. Trustee Pinillo. Thank you, Chair. Through you, I would just ask that if this passes, we also send a copy of this to other boards in the province who may also want to mimic a similar motion to adopt a similar letter. Um, and so would just ask that that be considered if this passes. Thanks. Trustee Edwards. 
Thank you, and I, I'm just thinking at this point in time, and I apologize for this coming up, but I just, I thought this was really relevant to get it forward. Uh, but it says the funding of mandated integrity commissioner's cost um, um, under the proposed regulation, because that regulation hasn't been mandated at this point in time. So just under the proposed uh, 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 regulation, sorry. Objection to that uh, addition to the motion. Any objection? <coughs> Say it. Funny. Cost. With with an S two, I think Jillian. Costs T S. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. Is there any further discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Any opposed? I'm seeing none. Motion carries. Now moving on to um, trustees Edwards and Miller to provide the Special Education Advisory Committee report of February 16th, 2024. Go ahead. Thank you. I think it's a parliamentary inquiry, but I might have the wrong thing. Um, I just wanted to remind people that the unions did ask us to use these cards so that they could clearly see on the Zoom what the votes were. So if we could remind trustees, rather than raising their hands, to use the cards. Was that a parliamentary question? Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. Point of personal privilege, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll, 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 we'll argue about it later. Either way, we like it. We'll keep it. Okay, now, uh, Trustee Edwards, will you be presenting the report? Um, the report of the Special Education Advisory Committee uh, held uh, Thursday, February 15th can be found in your uh, package. Um, and I just want again to remind some of the, the business that we are, di are discussing. We are looking at um, having a um, uh, basically, a SEAC is planning to have an event in the fall for parents, and that there is a proposed school uh, year calendar change for, especially for new members coming to SEAC that's starting in the fall. We're looking at uh, the meetings to be held the first Thursday of the month of the month instead of the third Thursday of the month. And then I would really like to express appreciation, and it's somewhat measured in a further further report. The fact that staff has taken the initiative when they do the, the basically the monitoring of the site in the SIP, um, monitoring um, that they take the opportunity to mention to the ministry as the ministry staff that come in to uh, indicate where capital improvements or capital uh, issues arise when it's supporting our students with uh, special education needs, particularly in equipment. Um, that we ensure that we include our spaces because it's, we're trying to provide wraparound services for all. Thank you. Thank you for that report. And we'll go back to Trustee Edwards for the OPSPA update. The OPSPA update is, is provided um, uh, in your uh, package on page 51. Um, just uh, mention that it was a great event um, being part of and participating in some of the leadership uh, opportunities that are available to students when participating in, their, in this uh, uh, Simcoe County School uh, District School Board Outdoor Center. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, memo, item 12, uh, in your package. 
and the days of significant that's also included there. As there is no further business, I'd like to adjourn this meeting. We will have a brief recess before we begin with the vacancy committee.
learn and live. Moving to the next item on our agenda, are there any declarations of interest at this point? Seeing none, uh, we will proceed to a motion to approve this agenda. Can I have a mover? Trustee Pinello and a seconder. Trustee Linton. All in favor? And the motion uh, is carried and we have an agenda. Uh, we do have uh, the first, the first uh, recommended action is uh, item number five, the election of a chair. Uh, before, uh, before opening nominations, I'd like to note the following. When two or more trustees are nominated and agree to stand, each shall be given an opportunity to speak to their candidacy, and then voting shall begin until the uh, using the confidential polling system. I will now open nominations for the position of chair of the vacancy committee. Do I have any nominations? Trustee Morton. Did I open your mic? No? Oh, you are you nominating yourself or are you? okay. I'm trying to press the button, but um <laughs> Okay, here we go. I should raise my voice if need be. Oh, it's me. Okay. Thank you. And through you, I would like to nominate Trustee Edwards. Trustee Edwards, do you accept the nomination? Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, do we have any further nominations for chair of the vacancy committee? Trustee Oldfield. I'd like to nominate Trustee Pinello. Trustee Pinello, do you accept? I do, with thanks to my nominator. Okay. Are there any further nominations uh, for the position of chair of the vacancy committee? Trustee Pinello? Thank you, Chair. Through you, I'd like to nominate Trustee Brown. Trustee Brown, do you accept? Thank you, and through you, but I respectfully decline. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Uh, Trustee Edwards. Thank you. After further consideration, I'm going to pull my name from, uh, from the position. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. Uh, so at this point, uh, Trustee Pinello is the only standing trustee nominated for the chair of the vacancy committee. Uh, are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Trustee Pinello. Thank you, Chair. Through you, I will nominate Trustee Oldfield. Trustee Oldfield, do you accept? No, thank you. I decline. At this point, Trustee Pinello is the only trustee standing for uh, the uh, chair of the vacancy committee. Uh, I have called for um, a number of nominations and we have gone over three times. So at this point, um, I will close the nominations uh, and I will uh, congratulate uh, Trustee Pinello to assume the seat of chair of the vacancy committee. Thank you, Trustee Pinello. We will recess uh, for a few minutes so that the chair of the committee can be briefed on the next steps, uh, and we will resume in approximately five minutes. Thank you.
Education Act, or three, appoint a qualified person through an application process. Um, for either of the appointment options, the vacancy then must be filled within 90 days, which is June 25th, 2024. That same timeline doesn't apply uh, if there is a by-election. Um, the report details what it means to be a qualified person to serve as trustee. Uh, essentially, they must be qualified to vote and be a resident within the jurisdiction of the DDSB, provided that they're not otherwise disqualified under the terms of the Education Act. Um, option one uh, for the committee to consider tonight is a by-election. Uh, we've met with the City of Oshawa to discuss what that would look like should the committee decide to go down that path. Um, the City estimates that the cost for a by-election will be approximately $1.15 million, all of which would need to be borne by the DDSB. Um, if the committee does choose the by-election option, the timelines under the Municipal Elections Act uh, would apply. Uh, the city's indicated that to organize effectively for a by-election, uh, nomination day would be 60 days following their receipt of the committee's decision, and that voting days would be 45 days after that. So the entire process for that would be about 105 days, which is about three and a half months. Option two for the committee to consider is appointing one of the unsuccessful candidates from the last trustee election for Oshawa. The results for that election is included as Appendix A in your package. Should the committee wish to explore this option, we recommend that the vacancy committee reconvene at a later date, uh, and in the meantime, research the options on the list to inform the committee's decision. Option three for the committee to consider is appointing a qualified candidate through an application and interview process. So the process is as stipulated in our bylaws, and that's included as Appendix D in your package. Should the committee choose this option, it's recommended that the committee adopt the draft timeline as set out in Appendix B, if that proposed timeline is adopted, we'll then be able to begin promoting the opportunity as early as this Wednesday, starting this Wednesday, April 17th, and the application deadline as proposed right now would then be two weeks later on Wednesday, May the 1st at 4 p.m. Um, the costs associated with advertising of the opportunity are estimated to be no more than $3,000, which can be incorporated within the existing advertising budget of the DDSB. Um, we would then, uh, according to the draft proposed timeline, uh, circulate the applicant packages to trustees on Friday, May the 3rd, uh, and then a special board meeting to conduct interviews and select the successful candidate uh, would be during the week of Monday, May the 6th, so from May 6th to May 10th. Um, the scheduling of that special board meeting, uh, it's proposed to happen by polling trustees on their availability in consultation with the chair of the vacancy committee and the chair of the board. Um, the draft time timeline that's proposed uh, right now was developed based on the previous appointment process um, that's taken place uh, during the last term and there are lessons learned from that. Uh, but it also uh, was developed so that the appointed uh, candidate could be sworn in and attend the Tuesday, May 21st, 2024 board meeting. Um, again, as noted, if there is an appointment uh, process, the, the deadline to appoint would be June 25th, um, but uh, we had developed the draft timeline so that uh, a new uh, trustee, uh, if, if this option is selected by the committee, would be able to be sworn in uh, by the May uh, board meeting, uh, pending obviously any changes uh, and, and decision of what the committee uh, is to, uh, does tonight, of course. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're open for questions from trustees. I see Trustee Morton. Thank you. I don't have a question. I would like to put forward a motion that we look at option number three and fill this trustee vacancy by pursuing the interview process. Okay, do I have a seconder for the motion? Trustee Edwards. Uh, any discussion? I see Trustee Oldfield. Thank you, and through you, Chair. <clears throat> I speak in favor of this motion uh, for a number of reasons. Um, while although I, I strongly support the democratic process of an election, uh, certainly when I consider the cost of 1.15 million to hold a by-election, it seems uh, cost prohibitive. Uh, when you consider that uh, in the 2022 election, Oshawa had its lowest ever voter turnout with only 18.4% of eligible voters casting ballots. Um, and that was with a 
full election where they were uh, voting for municipal councils. Uh, and then I also considered that there's the fact that running an election campaign is cost prohibitive for many people. Uh, a successful campaign costs money to be able to run. And, you know, certainly democracy is much more democratic for people with, with money. Uh, when I considered the option two of selecting someone from the list from 2022, my concern was that um, this would have us selecting someone without any real information about the candidate and even whether or not they remain qualified at this point. Uh, I also think it prohibits anyone who may now be qualified, someone new to the region or someone who is now qualified who wasn't previously from putting their name forward. And so finally, um, with all things considered, the application process seemed to be the best option as one, it's economically responsible. Uh, it allows any of the 2022 candidates who did run to apply. It opens it up to anyone else who may now be qualified and it provides a process that's accessible to all, not just for those who can afford to run a campaign, an election campaign. And I think finally it allows the board itself to select a qualified candidate who understands the legislation, the policies and bylaws of the board and who is committed to upholding those uh, bylaws and, and uh, policies. Okay, thank you. I see Trustee Edwards. Thank you, and I concur with, uh, I, I, I do, um, and I'm in favor in this motion, I concur with many of the points that uh, Trustee Ofield made, uh, particularly that, uh, and just to note that the uh, candidate can come from any of the, any area, any municipality within Durham Region because of the fact that um, it's not a requirement to reside in the municipality that you run, just within the administrative boundary of the Durham uh, District School Board. But also, particularly, I, I concur with the fact that we can then, uh, through an application process, base, have a determined um, sort of qualifications and knowledge and experience uh, around the education system, because it is a steep learning curve, um, and there's only basically two years remaining, um, and so that they can come in uh, with that, uh, that knowledge maybe they have um, and provide um, input uh, for, for the community um, at this table. Thank you. Thank you, I see Trustee Thatcher. Thank you, and through you, Chair. And I do support this motion as well. Um, I believe that it would not be prudent for us to be spending a million dollars, especially given the fact that we have very low voter turnout uh, and the voters, the, those that do come out, are more interested in voting for the other municipal positions. Um, I feel that um, this uh, is, is also a democratic process for us to, you know, look here at uh, behind door number three, because it does also include an opportunity for those um, who were not successful in the last election to bring their names forward again, should they choose. Thank you. Thank you, and I see Trustee Morton again. Thank you, and through you, Chair. There was one thing that I should have mentioned when I put forward the motion, and that was looking at option number two. I looked at that. We have used that in the past on one occasion, but I didn't think we could do that at this time because positions four through eight were all very close, eight and nine percent. They were too close to consider using option number two. That's why I put forward the motion for option three. Chair Pinello, if I may, um, I know there's a motion uh, on the floor right now. Um, I just want to point out a couple sections uh, of the bylaws that I think it would be prudent if the vacancy uh, committee does uh, consider uh, right now. Uh, that uh, the vacancy committee shall establish the timeline and set a deadline for the appointment process 
uh, and that the vacancy committee shall establish the interview date and schedule for interviews. Um, should the committee uh, decide to uh, vote in favor uh, of option three, the motion that's currently on the table, um, these two sections are not anticipated uh, right now. So if the committee uh, wished to, then they would then need to uh, move an amendment um, that would say in accordance with the timeline set out in Appendix B of the staff report, uh, obviously pending any changes uh, to those draft timelines as well. Thank you very much. I think um, instead of amending this motion that's on the floor, we could do a second motion that would outline the timeline that would correspond with the option chosen. So I think we'll do that just for clarity's sake. Um, I see Trustee Oldfield. Do you want me to read the whole motion? Again, the whole? Okay. So you, what do you want me? Okay. Seeing no other questions or comments, I'm going to call the question. We'll use our cards, please. All those in favor of the motion to select option number three as outlined. Okay, anyone opposed? The motion carries. Now we can uh, address the timeline issue, so I'll need a separate motion. I see Trustee Oldfield. I'd like to move a motion to uh, to uh, fill the vacancy in accordance with the timelines set out in Appendix B of the staff report. Does that suffice? Okay, do I have a seconder? Trustee Cunningham, any discussion? Trustee Edwards? Um, I, was it only a week, basically, we gave uh, the last time for application processes? Because that's all we're uh, basically allowing at this point in time is, is, well, nine days, I guess, but that includes a weekend sort of thing. Um, I'm just, as, as far as, uh, well, I, get, I know, I guess the application deadline is for, uh, is for May 1st, but, um, wouldn't it be prudent that the application, the news, uh, go right up until the deadline um, at this point in time? So I'm, I'm just because right now you've got to April 26th, and I just don't know where as far as cutoff of, of advertisement sort of thing. Thank you. So uh, unfortunately, in, in Durham region anymore, there are not um, uh, paper uh, publications in which it would be advertised. It would be advertised uh, online. Um, so the it would be advertised, continue to be advertised on the website uh, until the application deadline. Uh, in the bylaws, uh, it requires a minimum of one week uh, of advertisements. Um, so it was anticipated that it would be in local newspapers uh, until uh, the 26th, but it would still be open and available until the application deadline. Any further discussion or questions? Trustee Linton. Um, so for you, Chair, just for clarity at this point, we've got the proposed date um, of the special board meeting, May 6th through 10th, but no time. Would we establish that time at this point, or would that be done later? Uh, through, through the Chair, as proposed right now in the timeline, um, that it would be determined uh, by a poll of trustees in consultation with the chair of the vacancy committee and chair of the board. So what that, uh, in my mind, would look like uh, is staff consulting uh, with uh, both chairs uh, in terms of determining options uh, for then trustees to provide uh, their availability on. Um, what we've seen in the past, and this will depend on the number of applicants, uh, is if there are quite a large number of applicants, it is possible that then a second day uh, could be scheduled. But I think in terms of the polling uh, of trustees, I, uh, we, you know, we would ask uh, both chairs if they would like us to uh, essentially assess trustee availability in both the daytime and the evening um, for all of those days uh, of that week. Um, obviously, pending on schedules, as indicated in the bylaws, the chair of the board would chair that 
that special board meeting, so we'd want to make sure that the chair of the board uh, would be available uh, as well. So it could look like, you know, AM, you know, four hour block from, you know, 10 to two and then two to six and six onwards, like that, that could be an option. Um, it really will depend on the, those conversations with both chairs um, in terms of the polling. Okay, any further questions or comments? Trustee Brown. Thank you, and through you, Chair. So one of the things I'm gonna ask is about process. And I've noticed that, yes, we have to poll trustees and chairs and everyone to make sure that we get a full day. Now, if somebody could only, if a trustee could only make half a day, is, are those things gonna be taken into consideration for fairness? So. Ultimately, uh, that decision will rest with the chair of the vacancy committee uh, in consultation with the chair of the board. Um, but in assessing availability, uh, we would do it through that polling system and we would obviously, I think, make our recommendation uh, based on that and share what the results uh, of that availability is. Uh, I think it's in everyone's interest that uh, trustees are available uh, and, and would attend that meeting. Um, however, it's also up to trustees to determine if they do not want to attend that meeting, they don't have to. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Martin. Thank you and through you, Chair. I would just like to look at that week of May the 6th to the 10th when we would be conducting the interviews. So on the Monday, that's May the 6th, we have SAL that day. It's Ontario Skills. We've got many of our students competing in Toronto on that day and we have standing that night. So I would ask that we avoid May the 6th. Thank you, I think that can be taken into consideration. Any further comments or questions? Okay, then I will call the question on this motion to adopt the timeline outlined in Appendix B. Um, I would ask you to use your cards again. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. We now have our process and our timeline. Um, is there any other business at this time? Seeing none, can I please have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Trustee Linton, Trustee Miller, thank you very much. All in favor? Mm-hmm. This meeting is adjourned.